Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our worship service on this beautiful Sunday morning. Uh, just one announcement that I'm aware of, and that is a reminder that church council is happening this week, Tuesday. Um, because it's summer and we wanted to save some travel time and don't have a whole lot on our agenda to discuss, we are meeting on Zoom. So if you're a congregation member who has something you want to bring to the church council, um, please make sure that you get that information to them before the meeting this Tuesday. Are there any other announcements? That's right. It is being our breakfast this week on Wednesday. So uh, come on out at 9 o'clock. Uh, we have breakfast together at the BNR Diner with all comers from the congregation. So feel free to come out and join us. Yes. You know, Thursday National Donut Day could be every week, and then we could have donuts every week. <laughs> I like donuts. <laughs> there you go. So uh, coffee hour, we've got donuts and um, some fruit and coffee, so come on out for that as well. Yes, Barb. Okay. Okay, so if anyone wants to put together or assist with a float for Labor Day Parade, please contact Barbara, um, and we'll work on that. Over yeah, right, Food Pantry did one last year. So uh, if you'd like to do that, talk to Barbara, and we'll see if we can get a working group together to get that accomplished. I want to say good morning to everybody joining us online, either on Zoom or on Facebook. We're glad you're with us today. And uh, is that it then for announcements? Our worship begins then with our call to worship. We invite you to rise as you are able. We give you thanks, O oh God, with our whole hearts. Before all creation, we sing your praises. We bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day we called, you answered us. You increased our strength of soul. Though we walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve us against our adversaries. Your steadfast love, O Holy One, endures forever. You may be seated as we pray together. O Holy One, your love indeed endures forever. We pray for the presence of the Holy Spirit this day as we worship together in beloved community. Be with us in our singing and praising as we share the word in Jesus' name, amen. Our opening hymn is number 172, Jesus Calls Us or the Tumult.
The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us take a moment and share God's peace. Peace be with everybody here today. God's peace be with those who are joining us online as well. At this time, we are going to collect up our prayers for later on in the worship service. If you're joining us online and you have prayer requests, you can type those, first names only please, into the chat or the comments. And if we get them in time for the prayers today, we'll include them today. If we get them later on in the week, I'll look at the list at the end of the week and pray for everybody listed. If you're here in the sanctuary, what are our prayers for this day? Jody and for Julie. Gwen and Jean. Healing for Colleen. For Betty and for Jerry. All right. We'll raise up those prayers a little later on, along with any that come in from our online gathering. Together as we worship, let us take this moment to consider our need for transformation and forgiveness. Dear God, the creator of all things based on love, you created us in your image of love, and there have been times when we've fallen short of that love, not only to you, but to each other and all of creation. We thank you for the comforting strength and compassion of the Holy Spirit to do better in bringing love and grace in all we do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We take a moment now for silent confession, reflection, and prayer. Just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with the scripture, as Paul writes, I believed and so I spoke, we also believe and therefore we also speak in the affirming knowledge that when we turn to God with our shortcomings, we are renewed by God's love, we are renewed in God's love by the grace of Christ. Amen. And our first reading is that uh, passage that I just referenced uh, from the Apostle Paul. Uh, we're reading through 2 Corinthians. We're on chapter 4, starting at the 13th verse, and then we're going to read to five, chapter 5, the first verse. Oh, come on here. There we go. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. The Apostle Paul writes, Just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with the scriptures, I believed and so I spoke, we also believe and so we speak because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus Christ will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace as it extends to more and more people may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. 
so we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent in which we live is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made of hands, but eternal in the heavens. The word of the Lord. Our next hymn is number 410, If You But Trust in God to Guide You. Our Holy Gospel for today continues our reading through the Gospel of St. Mark. We're in the third chapter today, and it's just a quick and simple little reading for today. Chapter 3, starting at the 13th verse. Jesus went up the mountain and called to him those whom he wanted, and they came to him. And he appointed twelve, whom he also named apostles, to be with him and to be sent out to proclaim the message and to have authority to cast out demons. So he appointed the twelve, Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, James, son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, to whom he gave the name Bonerges, that is, sons of thunder, 
and Andrew and Philip and Bartholomew and Matthew and Thomas and James the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus and Simon the Canaanian and Judas Iscariot who betrayed him. The Gospel of the Lord. So today, we get this very simple little reading that names out the disciples who are also called apostles. Let's start with wondering what that means. A disciple is someone who learns. They're the student. An apostle is someone who is sent. They're passing along what they have learned. So these 12 are called by Jesus. I mean, we hear earlier about him calling them to follow him as disciples, but now they're set apart. They're set aside as apostles. So they are not only learning as disciples, but they are now being sent out into the world. And it is a motley crew that Jesus gathers together. Sometimes I think when we think about the disciples or we think about the, uh, uh, the first followers of Jesus, we get this picture in our head of particularly saintly beings, particularly good folk who have uh, nothing but trust and nothing but uh, 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 belief in their hearts, who do everything right. But that's not who is called by Jesus. Now, we don't know a lot of stories about every one of them, but we do have some pretty good stories about some of them. So let's go through the list and look at who these people really are. Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter. So we'll hear him referred to in the Gospels as Simon or as Peter or as Simon Peter. So all three of those are sometimes the same person. Though notice there's another Simon as well because, you know, apparently we weren't real careful about picking unique names for kids in those time periods. So we've got two Simons, but first we're going to talk about Simon Peter. Simon Peter is and always will be my favorite disciple because he's the one who jumps in with both feet every time Jesus tells the disciples to do something. He's like, yeah, yeah, let's go, let's do it. And then as soon as he gets in the middle of it, he realizes it's really overwhelming and he's like, whoa, I'm scared, and Jesus has to rescue him. I love Simon Peter for his enthusiasm. I also love Simon Peter because he reveals to me how overwhelming God's work sometimes is and reminds me that even when we get overwhelmed, God continues to stand with us. So just a couple of stories about Simon Peter. Simon Peter is the one that Jesus uh, uh, finds, or when Jesus is walking on the water to, to the boat, Simon Peter calls out, if it's you, Lord, tell me to come to you. And uh, Jesus is like, okay, walk to me on the water. And Simon Peter gets out of the boat and he starts walking on the water. And every time I hear this story, I picture Wiley e. Coyote. You know, he runs off the cliff, he gets 20 yards off the cliff, and then he realizes what's going on and then he falls. I picture that with Simon Peter. He gets out of the boat, he's walking on the water, he's confident, he's good, but then he looks down, he realizes what's happening, and he starts to sink like a rock. Simon Peter Peter being the word for rock, Jesus names him Simon the Rock. He sinks like a rock and Jesus has to reach out his hand and pull him up from the water and immediately then they are on the boat. Simon Peter is the one who says to Jesus in the garden, we will never betray you, Lord. And it isn't an hour later that they're in the courtyard of Caiaphas. Jesus is on trial before uh, the high court. And someone says, aren't you with that guy that's on trial? And he says, oh, no, that's not me. Nah, nothing to do with him. 
and the cock crows. Again, Peter falls like a rock. But again, Jesus reaches out and Jesus rescues him because the next story we hear about Peter is Jesus telling uh, uh, the, the women to tell the disciples to meet him on the mountain for his ascension. And he says, and tell Peter also. Peter is not lost and left for his betrayal. Rather, Peter is reinvited back in because Jesus continues to invite those who stumble and fall like Peter the Rock. James and John, the sons of Zebedee. We hear a few stories about them. The first one, of course, is that they're fishing with their father, and Jesus calls them, and immediately they leave their nets, and they go to follow Jesus to become fishers of men. The other big story we hear about them is that they get into an argument a bit later on, uh, shortly before Jesus is uh, arrested and crucified. They get into an argument about who's going to be the greatest, who's going to sit at Jesus' right hand when he comes into his glory. And the two of them are arguing, as brothers do, about which one of them is better. No, I get to sit at his right hand. No, I get to sit at his right hand. You you know, you can go, go sit at his left hand or down the table somewhere, but I'm the best. No, I'm the best. So they get into this argument. Instead of focusing on Jesus Christ, they're focusing on themselves and on their own glory, and Jesus ends up reprimanding them. But even though they are reprimanded in that moment, they are still part of the motley crew of disciples and apostles that go out and spread the word of Jesus Christ. Then we get Andrew. We don't hear a lot about him and Philip and Bartholomew. We get Matthew, the tax collector. Remember the one who is looked down upon by his own people because he's in league with the Romans. He's the IRS agent, the one you never want to show up at your door. He's the one who's collecting the taxes to give to the occupying Roman government. We get Thomas. Remember Thomas? Thomas, who is uh, not there when Jesus appears to the disciples after his uh, resurrection. Thomas, who is, I don't know, making a beer run, out getting groceries, using the restroom, that doesn't tell us what he's doing, but he isn't in the room. And when they tell him later that Jesus has appeared, he says, yeah, right. Unless I put my hands in his side, and unless I touch the marks of the nails in his hand, I will not believe. Rather than being uh, cast aside for his doubts, Jesus makes a special trip comes back, you know, doesn't say, oh, I've already been there, but instead comes back just for Thomas and says, put your hands in my side. Touch my hands. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas falls to his knees and says, my Lord and my God. Then we hear about Alpheus and Thaddeus again. Not a lot of stories about the two of them. We hear about Simon the Canaanian, who in other places is referred to as Simon the Zealot. And Simon the Zealot is part of a group, a political group at that time, called the Zealots. And the Zealots were a group uh, who wanted to violently um, kick the Romans out of occupied Judah. They wanted to uh, chase them out, uh, go to war, and they were trying to get other people to go to war with them to chase the occupying Romans out. So he's the zealot. He's zealous, but what he's zealous about is chasing out the Romans. And Christ gives him a different focus for his zealotry, to be zealous instead about sharing the good news of God. And of course, in this motley crew, Jesus invites Judas Iscariot. 
I always find it interesting that Jesus invites Judas to be one of the disciples, one of the apostles, one of the learning and sent ones, because Jesus knows who Judas is, just like he knows who all of the others are. Jesus knows that Judas is the one who is going to betray him. And yet God's love is so deep and so wide that God, through Jesus Christ, invites this motley crew to be God's spokespeople in the world. It gives me hope for each of us. It gives me hope that God sees not only our warts and forgives them, but that God also sees our possibilities. Jesus looked at each of these 12 and saw the possibilities in them, the faith in them, the opportunities in them to go out and to share the good news. And Jesus overlooked their warts, overlooked their doubts, overlooked their difficulties, and when those difficulties arose, Christ called them back, invited them in, reminded them that they were still loved, and sent them again. Christ looks at us, sees everything that we are, the good, the bad, and the ugly, sees this motley crew, invites us to be disciples, to learn at the feet of Jesus, and sends us out into the world to share the goodness of the glory of God. As the Apostle Paul said, uh, we speak or we listen and so we speak we are sent also out into the world to speak the good news because someone spoke it to us. Exactly who we are. We are loved by Jesus Christ for all that we are. God sees our possibility and our promise, and God sends us out into the world to speak as we have been spoken to, to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our next hymn is number 503, O Savior, Let Me Walk With You.
Let us pray now for all people in this world and for God's blessing to be upon us. Gracious Lord, we thank you for accepting us just as we are. We thank you for your love and your care. We ask that you continue to be with us, helping us to thrive in you and to share your goodness in the world. We pray this day, Lord, for those who need your healing touch. We pray for Jody, Julie, Gwen, Jean, Colleen, Betty, and Jerry, and Pastor Tom. Bless and heal each of them, bring them strength, and bring them patience in this time. We also pray, Lord, for all those who are going through major changes in their lives. We ask for your blessing as they figure out new normal and as they continue to build a life in you. All of this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive those debtors. And lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are grateful for the gifts that we have received in our lives. We are invited to participate in this opportunity of generosity to continue the mission of God's love for the world. We are grateful and thankful. Today, as we collect our offering, the plate is at the back of the sanctuary, and you may place offerings in as you leave. If you're joining us online and would like to support the ministry of this church, you can mail offerings to 887 Bunnell Avenue, Red Granite, Wisconsin, 54970. Even as those offerings make their way to us, we dedicate them back to God's work through our hearts, our hands, our words, and our actions. O oh, Holy One, with gratefulness we offer and dedicate these gifts for the continuation of our work in Christ's name. Amen. Our final hymn is number 492, I Would Be True.
I invite you to rise as you are able for the closing blessing. Dear friends, we have been nourished and renewed this day. We go out and share the kingdom of God with all whom we encounter. We live in the love of God who created us, God who redeemed us, and God who sustains us. We go in peace, sharing the good news. Amen.